APS is telling us they don't collect that data. <laughs> Either they're lying and saying that they don't have that information that they can share with you, or they're bad at business. A group of APS customers recently protesting at the company's headquarters and two consumer advocates say they do not believe a claim being made by the state's largest utility APS when APS says this, quote, we don't perform peak demand breakdowns by customer class. Here's why this matters, and here's what APS did end up providing us as an alternative. Now, what I'm about to explain is a big deal because APS is asking the Arizona Corporation Commission for a 16.4% rate hike for homeowners. That's on top of an 8% rate hike they implemented last year and on top of an average $14 a month surcharge extension on bills they got approval for earlier this year. So first, what's peak demand? Peak demand is when a ton of customers are using a lot of power from the grid all at once and it reaches a peak level for the year. In Arizona, that's usually on a really hot afternoon in July or August. I've reported more than 50 stories about your electricity bills in recent years and I can tell you, this is probably the single most discussed metric that power companies talk about. When a utility company breaks an all-time peak demand record, utilities and even regulators are quick to publicize it. This was APS's CEO during the last rate hike describing the anticipated growth of peak demand. I can't emphasize enough how important it is that we ensure that projects actually get built. It's very scary to us looking at the next three years, knowing that our peak demand is gonna grow substantially. I asked the state's largest power companies this, what is the breakdown of how each customer class contributed to the record peak demand day of three summers, 2025, 2022, and 2019? Why would I ask this? Well. We wanna see trends. We wanna see which classes of customers are contributing most to rising peak demand. Because remember, APS is asking for all customers to pay higher rates to build more stuff like gas plants, lines, and substations to keep up with rising peak demand. I also asked the utilities to provide a breakdown of how data centers have contributed to those totals separate from other large power users like TSMC. How do they all play into the equation? That's our question. APS told us we don't perform peak demand breakdowns by customer class. Longtime customer advocates tell us each utility in Arizona should be able to readily provide data of the amount of electricity that is used by customer classes and groups like data centers during peak demand. One data analyst who advocates for APS customers said this. For APS to say that they don't break this down is really hard for me to believe. APS executives have testified that the peak demand causes costs to go up. How are they asking for a 14% rate increase if they don't have the data to support that. APS did give peak demand totals of these three years, which by the way, are already publicly available. Those totals show over 7,100 megawatts in 2019 to 8,600 this past summer. That's a 21% jump in six years after being flat the previous 12 years. So back to APS in a moment. Meanwhile, the state's second largest utility, the not-for-profit SRP, did provide the specific information we requested. It also shows a big jump over six years. Look at the data centers. On the highest peak demand day in the summer of 2019, they made up 1.2% of the total. Fast forward to 2025, on this peak demand record day, data centers made up 5.2% of the total. What this tells us is that the data center category grew 425%. Their annual growth rate was 11 and a half times that of residential customers. Data centers are rapidly adding to peak demand on SRP's grid. Over that same time, the contribution from household customers to peak demand load remained robust and steady at 59%. The percentage contribution by small and large businesses, including schools and churches, actually went slightly down. As for SRP's rates, new rate hikes kick in in November, the first base rate hike since 2019. Residential rates on average go up 3.4%, residential solar 5.5%, large businesses and data center rates only go up 1.3%. Okay, back to APS. While they say they don't have a peak demand customer class breakdown for the years we requested, they did tell us, quote, data centers typically make up about 350 megawatts of energy on our system, about 4% of the total peak demand. The data analyst we interviewed said that in itself is interesting because so much hype has been focused on APS accommodating data centers. A couple years ago, APS predicted customers who are categorized as extra high load factor, which includes the data centers, would reach more than 681 megawatts by December of this year. What APS is saying here is that data centers account for only 350 megawatts. That's out of more than 1,500 megawatt increase in APS's peak demand since 2019. This means data centers have accounted for less than 25% of the total rise in peak demand since 2019. So what's going on here? Are companies like TSMC making up a lot of the difference? Is it homeowners, both, something else? 
Because APS did not provide the specific breakdown data over the years as we requested, it's not possible to tell who contributed to the rest of the growth. APS did give us this graphic. It shows 2024 peak data, but it does not pertain to our request to help us understand how data centers compared to other large companies and classes. And by the way, after APS initially told us they don't collect peak demand by customer class, we did give them a chance to respond again before we aired our news story on TV about this. And we quoted consumer advocates who just challenged the notion that APS cannot provide a breakdown. APS told us, quote, the specific info requested is not needed to support operations, so is not information APS compiles or has readily available. One of our consumer advocates says she believes this goes to a larger problem, telling us, quote, APS historically has provided data when it suits their narrative and has refrained or avoided providing data that is often in the ratepayer's interest. Looking ahead, Along with the 16.4% rate hike APS is requesting for homeowners to kick in next year, the utility is requesting a 47% rate hike for extra high load factor customers, which typically include data centers. APS says, quote, we have proactively requested significant updates to ensure data centers pay what it costs to serve their high electricity needs without shifting costs to existing customers. So it's up to these five commissioners, Kevin Thompson, Nick Myers, Leah Marquez-Peterson, Renee Lopez, and Rachel Walden to decide whether any new rate hike is necessary for homeowners and small businesses and how much more data centers should be asked to pay. This is Power and Influence. I'm Joe Dana. That's the latest on peak demand.